If someone asked you what salvation is, what would you say? Many of us have a vague sense that salvation is related to heaven, salvation gets us in, and hell, salvation keeps us out. And while there is truth in that, it sort of misses the point of salvation. So what is salvation? Let's talk about that. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Wednesday, September 29th. 2021. Both scripture and the tradition, namely our confessions, such as the Westminster Confession, talk about salvation. But try as you might, you'd be hard pressed to find a definition of it. It's as if everyone knows what it means, so there's no real need to define it. And maybe that describes you. But I'm one of those, for better or worse, who has to think through the meaning of these things. Maybe I overthink things, but I think it's important to know what we're talking about when we use terms that are as central to Christian faith as salvation. First of all, know that salvation is not a term that is unique to the New Testament. There are plenty of references to salvation in the Old Testament as well. In the Old Testament, Salvation tends on the whole not to refer to individuals, but to the whole people of Israel. That's not to say there aren't instances where individuals praise God for saving them, but it still refers mainly to God's relationship to Israel. And in this context, salvation usually refers to the ways God has saved Israel from destruction, saved them from their enemies. Salvation has to do with God's act in this life, not in a future life. By contrast, salvation in the New Testament often has something to do with eternal life. That's where we get the idea of salvation having to do with heaven. The problem is, we often think salvation only has to do with the life everlasting. The thing is, there's more to it than that. Now, rightly or wrongly, Christians are sometimes mocked for this belief, and there is some justification for this, for when salvation is held out as a carrot to the poor and the oppressed to just hang on until the next life when things will get better, then the idea of salvation becomes a means of justifying continued oppression of the poor. If people believe they have no control over what happens to them in this life, but that the next life will be better, well, they can be persuaded to just sit quietly and endure whatever terrible conditions they experience without working to change those conditions. Now, salvation is also sometimes used as a whip to drive people to the faith. Or should I rather say, the threat of eternal damnation, hell, is frequently used as a scare tactic to bring people to the faith. The problem with this approach is that it is really an appeal to people's self-interest. And salvation really moves in the opposite direction, calling us out of our self-absorbed lives. Which leads me to say what salvation is. Salvation isn't so much about avoiding the fires of hell as it is a gracious invitation to participate in God's kingdom both in this life and in the life to come. The kingdom of God, as we learned last week, is the realm of God's rule, the realm in which all things are set right once again, once and for all. In our tradition, the kingdom is the goal. Salvation is the means. In certain other traditions, though, salvation is the goal, the finish line, so to speak. In our Reformed tradition, salvation is the starting point from which the rest of the Christian life proceeds. The purpose of this life is, is not about getting ourselves into heaven, about getting ourselves saved, but about praising God for the salvation which has already been granted us. Notice, notice carefully the differences here. First of all, if the goal of faith is to be saved, then salvation becomes something we think we have to earn. But if salvation is a gift of God's free grace, 
then it becomes a gift to be thankful for in humility. Second, if being saved is the focus of my life, then my life is really all about me. How do I get saved? But where salvation is understood as a gift, then life becomes a means of thanking God. It's really a simple but profound difference. So to sum it up, what is salvation? It is the gift of inclusion in God's emerging kingdom, and it calls forth from us a sense of gratitude for God's goodness and grace. And now may the God of grace continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.